right. Let's see. This is on. That's on. Everything's ready to go. I'm babbling it myself is what I'm doing while I'm waiting for Ayame to get here. Should make it rather easy. Wow. Holy cow. Ah, I need a trim. It's getting so bad. Maybe one day. Well, I guess since we're waiting for everyone to get here, I'll go ahead and get the introduction out of the way. Welcome. Thanks everyone for joining me. It's, uh, you know, for this being karmic transmission number 25, I don't ever actually think I've said my own name or who I am and what this is all about. So uh, I'm here, Jake Vanderlin with you uh, as always. Hey, how's it going there, my friend? I can't hear you, no. It doesn't look like you're connected to audio. Hang on, technical difficulties for a second. But, uh, oh, what I was saying is, um, you know, in all my times of doing this, I don't ever actually think I've said my own name. Maybe the very first one, I'll have to go back and double check. I just kind of assume that everybody knows who I am and why I'm doing this. So it's kind of a funny little thing I, I have happened. But thank you for joining me. Uh, Jake Vanderlinden with me tonight. I've got Ayame X Goddess, uh, or sorry, my friend Ayame Nelson. Um, you can find her at Ayame X Goddess on Twitter. Um, you can find us at, at the Karmic Feed on Twitter for Karma Incarnate. You can also find us on YouTube and Facebook and all of the social media platforms through Karma Incarnate. And as always, the best way to find us is go to our website, www.karmaincarnate.com. And you can see right there what we're doing, how we want to end hunger and, and you know, what, what we're trying to do to get that done. But tonight, we're going to have a little more fun. Ayame, hey, can you hear me? Maybe. There we go. Okay, unmute. You got to hit the mute button. On, on. See? Hey, I told you I was I, muted. I gotcha. But with me tonight, I've got Ayame Nelson, one of my uh, oldest and dearest friends. I think it's safe to say I've known you longer in my life than I have known my life without you at this point, isn't it? I mean, that's that's very true because I've, uh, let's see, I think there were only seven or eight years of your life that you didn't know me. So, yeah, Wouldn't that I would, mean seven I or eight years see. of your life as well? Yeah. Because we are like this, the same age. That's what right. that means. Oh, oh gosh. Gotcha. I don't know what you're talking about. I am 27. Oh, oh yes, the immortal 27, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I just gotcha. look real. I just it's a hard 27. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is like an easy 27, is what you're saying. <laughs> uh with you, I think maybe we're talking like a like a hard 47? Hard Fair. 57? I don't know. Fair. You know, at least there, still got some you. hair, right? You know, that does make you an abnormality among the Vanderlindens. It does. It does. I am gonna knock on wood for that one. Oh, delightful! So, but thanks for joining me on Karmic Transmission Number Twenty Five. Sorry, didn't mean to blow your ears out there. No, it wasn't you. I stepped on the headphone cord. Oh, yeah. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more interesting. Clint had something come up. He, he's been doing a lot of filming and stuff lately, so I'm not quite sure what was going on, but he said that he was going to be kind of busy tonight. And my side guest, uh, he, he couldn't make it either. He had some things come up at home with his wife and kids. So I just figured, you know, why not have the two of us on here? And we can talk a little bit about getting to, getting to know ourselves. I, I said it, I don't know if you heard it when you were getting on. 25 of these, I don't actually think I've ever introduced myself or like why I'm I'm kind of the like any of that stuff. I always just say, these are my guests here with me and assume that everyone knows who I am. That would um, not shock me to hear that. Well, like pretty important guy. Y you know, people should just oh, know, right? At the very least uh, for the show, if not for other practical reasons. <laughs> 
So, but no, I figured, you know what, let's just have the two of us and we'll see where this takes us for an evening. Okay. So, well, before we do anything, uh, uh, I would like to formally introduce Jake Vanderlin, who is the oh. host of the Karmic Transmission, uh, a community impact agent, and uh, basically co founder of Karma Incarnate, uh, even though. Uh, I don't know if that's officially on paper, but it is for all intents and purposes the case. Uh, he has been uh, just as integral to this entire process as uh, anyone can be. And uh, yeah, that's who he is and why he is doing uh, the karmic transmission. That's also why he's hosting this instead of Rex, uh, because he's that important. So well, I just ordered now you know. That's all it is. I just order a really mean pizza and, and get to like ride on the coattails of all you creative. You, you do order a really mean pizza. You know. Although, uh, I don't know. Well, no, I guess you do order most of the time. So, yeah, I'll give you that one. Rex has kind of been mixing it up. You know, he, he dives in there more often these days, ordering the pizza and everything. That's He has more patience with that website than I do. That thing's just Are you kidding me? Like... But no, well, maybe it's both of you. Both of you <laughs> bitch about their way, and rightly so. But it's bad. Uh, there's there's a lot of bitching in that house about that website. So, but no, you're too kind. You're too kind to to even want to say such nice things. That this this whole endeavor was really a. It, it took all of us. You know, I I can't think of a night when we weren't all powwowing around a kitchen table or something trying to get things done, and that's that's what makes this really cool. And one of the one of the reasons to get to know one of the, that equally integral part, somebody like yourself. You know, I mean, we've got we even talked about it on a on a on a transmission, like the old Ki logos and the ideas and oh, stuff. And how I think that was the last transmission, as a matter of fact. Was it the last one? It, it was the been. last one Rex was on, and he was on the last one with Clint. He was talking about the, that Ki logo. Yeah. And yeah. I just want, like, I know he's joking, but at the same time, it's like, no, no, I'm, I can't, I can't with that. Like, yeah. we fought for so long uh, over that. Uh, dang it, the stickers are too far away. I was going to say it. From from what we had to where you brought it, it you're you're as, you're almost more integral in all reality because that's become a very iconic image all the way around. You know, it's our the logo our was Nike the logo swing. was a good a good bit of luck. By the way, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, I do a lot of the graphic design work for. I was going to get to that. So I was going to get uh, to that. Oh, you were going to get there. You okay. get it. You're going to just dive on into it. I get it. Dive on in. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, no, uh, but Ayame is truly amazing. One of the one of the most talented artists I've ever known in my life. We've been drawing comics since we were fifth grade, wasn't it? Like we started. I mean, I don't know where this right we thing is coming from, but yeah, uh, okay, I don't know okay. where this we yes. thing is coming from. You drew. I just kind of sat there and ran my mouth. You were, what I do you were right the inspiration. Here. Hey, hey, you know, I'll, I'll take a muse. Is that like a an executive producer credit or something like that? Where exactly does that come into play? I would I would say that's an executive producer credit. Yeah. Okay. Oh my oh. god. Sorry, this my lights are going weird here. Oh, you're all good. But no, I mean, we've been son of a bitch. Sorry, you've been doing art our entire lives. Well, I have gladly sat back and and claimed my fair share of credit where where I thought it was due. Uh, well, like I said, I mean, you know, news <laughs> is uh, pretty important to the process, for sure. I tried. I tried to contribute. But uh, no, I just, I, look at this. I, I wear your artwork, like, every day. Oh, my See? God. Ayame artwork right here. See? I'm wearing this. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. It, it doesn't get better. Oh, my right? God. I can never make fun of you and Rex for doing that again. No, no, you can't see. And this one oh, will be coordinated, unlike all the Disney trips where we're intentionally wearing the same shirt. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, I mean, we could pretend like we did that for the benefit of the show. I think it's too. I think it's even funnier the fact that it's not because it just goes to show that there's a connection. I just, I, I like the pirates one a lot. This is my old one, so it's, it looks better on camera, but it's, it's really faded a lot. But, um, Mine. 
my washing machine will actually flip my shirts right side out. So I'll turn them inside out to try to keep the print in better shape. But when I pull them out of the washer, it, it like reverses them and still beats them up. It's a shame. It's not a washing but, machine. That's a, they have a gremlin. Yeah, that's no. probably, you know, probably, that's probably what clogged that pipe. It was, it you was crawling up. That. You can't say that because Rex made us watch Gremlins 2 the other day. And now this is getting weird because. Oh, did like, really? You, yeah, yeah. We literally watched Gremlins 2. I think it was yesterday. Maybe it was Saturday. I, it, it was literally was the last two days. Was Gremlins 2 the new batch? Or was that, or was that it, It's the bad one. It's the okay. really bad one. <laughs> So the one that tries to be self-aware and it just goes all kinds of bad directions. But yeah. you might be right. I, I very well could have a gremlin that's ruining my my shirts because I go through these ones kind of I'm kind of hard on these ones, but I wear them all the time. Like I said, I wear your artwork every day because it's that good. You know, but you know, again, I'm I'm introducing you and I can't stop. It, it, it's Ayame is amazing, is what it comes down to. One of the coolest people that I've that I've known for. Oh geez, um, it's it's fifth grade. It's seriously like thirty years, just about. Yeah, that, wow, that, I think it is. It's like thirty years this year. I think. Yeah, that's a long time. That's a really long time. But what's what's so amazing is the fact that we've been able to be friends for as long as we have, and that we can do such cool things together. I mean, Rex and I were talking about this, and no, Rex, we're not watching Highlander next. We're not doing it. Okay. <laughs> I, I no no the next one you're gonna watch is Highlander two ooh Electric Boogaloo yeah you want to start talking about terrible movies <laughs> um but no I was thinking about it and it's like we sit here we're both wearing Disney shirts that you drew for us and you've been a Disney fan forever like way longer than Rex and I have been but it was in you convincing us to go to disneyland that it like sparked our yeah, it, i think i feel like it was less convincing and more i remember pretty clearly actually um one night when we were we, we had just left your house from doing karma stuff actually um rex and i were talking about vacations in your parking lot um mm -hmm. and i i mentioned that um i used to go to disneyland you know, with when my family and I used to live there, we would go to Disneyland, you know, four or five times a year. Like we didn't live in Anaheim, but we lived, lived close enough that it was a, you know, a reasonable yeah. trip. And back then, you know, you could get in for, you know, 20, 30 bucks a day. So it wasn't, wasn't like it was today. Um, but, you know, so we'd go there four or five times a year when we moved back to Utah. Um, it ended up being, we would go um usually once a year we would go on mother's day mm -hmm. when they yeah, had their big um you know they had this big mother's day buffet i don't know if they still do it but um so we would go like a week around mother's day um the crowds were basically non-existent and then in the middle of the week there was this massive like mother's day dinner that we did and you know we we got to do some really amazing things during that time like some stuff this was before the big renovations and stuff. So there's a lot of old secrets that aren't there anymore that we got to do and experience. So I was talking to him and I, and I mentioned to him that like, you know, I haven't been on vacation since I moved back or since before college at that point. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't been to Disneyland since before college, since I think my last year of high school. Yeah. And um, I, and, and Rex was like, well, we should go. And I'm like, oh yeah, ha ha, don't say that or I'm going to hold you to it. And then the next day I show up at your house and he's like, hey, we got tickets to Disneyland. So you better clear next week. <laughs> and yeah, after that, I mean, it was, it was interesting because you guys, um, as I recall, you had not been there for a while. Yeah. And you didn't know a lot of the like the background stuff to it and i remember the first trip we were talking a lot about it about these the little inspirations and where these things come from and what changes and what doesn't and yeah i mean it, i was surprised that you guys really got into it as much i'm happy that you did well it, it's it goes to show you just how how much those experiences can transfer from people you know and it's 
it's funny because I, I remember, you know, you guys, there were always those conversations that happened outside my apartment after everybody had left that Jake didn't really know about until the next day. And, and just, I remember happen. when all of a sudden the next day we're looking at Disney tickets and thinking about going to Universal and trying to plan a trip. And um, we were even thinking about going to uh, um, Spy Jam! Uh, uh, oh, medieval, medieval times. times. Yeah, we remember we were talking about going to medieval times. And We've everything. been talking about going to medieval times since 2014. It's, it's we have, we have, and we have never done it. Well, when you can, when you go to Disney and Universal and everything else, how important is medieval times? I mean, you know, I, I, uh, yeah. I, I, well, let, no, let, I wouldn't know because I've never been there. Maybe. <sighs> Maybe hey, hey, we it's did the tournament. In, we did the tournament of kings in Vegas with oh, that Amanda was, and Taylor, though. Remember that one was good. And you know what? Um, except for the near suffocation that I experienced, mm. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, but no, it's it's funny because I I remember the next day hearing about this plan for a Disney trip and all that stuff, and then literally it was like the next weekend the three of us just took off and went. Yeah, it and, was it was a very quick, yeah. like sudden thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it it happened, and it was and it was so much fun. And like you said, it was it was a lot of that intricacy that you knew and learned about all all growing up. Because you know, Rex and I, our experience with Disney when we were kids and, and little was we would go out there and do like dance performances and dance competitions and stuff. And so we were always busy, and yeah. you, you know, it was either riding rides or doing that. So we, we didn't really get into the background of it. And that's, you know, that I, I always joke about how it's not a Disneyland thing, but it really is that Disneyland trip that got us hooked into the idea of, of what, what people with a little bit of willpower and an incredible vision can actually do, you know, because that's, that's the true testament of what those parks and places are is, is they're really you know, if you if you want to make the happiest place on earth and you've got the will to do it, you can, you know, because yeah. that, that's what that man set out to do. And it's, and it's pretty incredible because it's not it's not the park is special. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people, when the people come in, they change, you know, it's it's really unique. So, yeah. And, and if it wasn't for you convincing us to go back in our, oh, geez, what were we in our late 20s at that point? <laughs> oh uh well it was it would have been 2013 or 14, 14, 14 i guess yeah somewhere right in there so um yeah we, wait what was it that recent i didn't we so karma started what uh nine years ago now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that would have been yeah yeah, 2000, yeah like, it would have been like 2013 yeah 2014 because i know the first year that we went to halloween was 14 mm -hmm. um but um yeah it, well and the thing is is you know i i know that there's a lot of disney people out there that are kind of weird and not you know obviously i'm no exception but you know it's it's tricky because a lot of people will tell you you know oh like people who who grow up doing that and and learn a lot about it will tell you oh it's it's great and you know, you really need to do, you know, it's like, oh, you've got to go and you've got to do it this way and you've got to do this. You've got to eat this. And, and to, you know, to me, it's that doesn't really convey what what's special about it. Like, I, I don't. I'm not one of those people that's like, you know, I'll blindly go with whatever they they say and do. And it's like, oh, it's ten dollars a month for Disney Plus. Now it's thirty dollars. And you know, here's this and buy it and all this stuff. I, I don't do that. And a lot of yeah. Disney people do. The thing that I wanted to share with you guys um, is what really makes it special to me. And um, especially once I really understood what you guys were trying to accomplish with Karma, I felt that the parallels there were very definite. Like, once you really understand what the legacy is there and what was trying to be accomplished and what did get accomplished, um, you know, you, you set out as one person who surrounds themselves with, you know, like-minded, skilled people 
to change the world. And that's really what karma is about. And obviously, you know, the end goal is different, but it, it shows that it can be done. And it shows that, you know, like karma, there's a soul there that uh, persists even today. I mean, in spite of all the things that, that they do now that I do consider to be very um, despicable, for lack of a better word, that, that heart and soul that, that exists there is still there. And it's mm -hmm. that heart and soul that, that really is, you know, a, a deep part of karma as well. No, I, I, man, I, I don't even know what to say after that. Cause it's, it's so yeah, I was, I rambled a lot. Yeah. Well, you, you're absolutely right though, because it's when it comes down to it, it's, it's that unsaid communication that feeling that gets that gets spread because it, it's you know when people like i said when people go into that park they change and it's not for anything the park does park does outwardly the park is a park it makes money it does its job you know but like that that magic touch that walt disney himself brought to all of it it's still there and you can feel it all the time and uh and it's very much it's um it's a big part of, of what karma is because it's not, um, you know, Rex says it all the time when he says, it's not my idea, it's our idea. And it's, it's that almost is such an understatement in a way because it's, it's literally the entirety of human existence and the idea of what we can do as a people synthesized into a formula that can be applied to reality. and used in a way that can literally let human potential grow and and that's something that it's a feeling it's a, it's a heartbeat it's something that can't be overwritten by anything else because it's it's just pure and that's really a big part of you know what we've tried to do here is we've tried to make something that'll just connect with people you don't you don't have to understand every facet and avenue that you feel it. And uh, we owe a lot of that to our, our friends, people like you that literally took us to Disneyland after we thought we had outgrown it. You know, that was that was our mentality. Disneyland's for kids. You don't, you don't go there as an adult. And nowadays you see a couple yeah, of- Yeah, I think we've spent know, more time there than, than we have it, in, a, in it, a lot yeah, of other places. You know? I, I can only imagine there are some days when I'm there and I'm walking around and and you know me when I'm there because I'm always looking up and smiling at people and saying hi and waving at the kids. Well, and, and you've got that always got that good goofy hat on. I mean, I, mean, I should be wearing my goofy that hat. That says it right what there. I should be doing. Um, but uh, it's funny because there are sometimes I look at those cra I look at those people and go, God, if I was looking at this group, if I saw. Jake and Rex, these two guys with these big red beards and grinning and walking around like a bunch of dickheads. I don't know what I would think of them, especially when they're like waving at me. Hey, how's it going? You know, because uh, yeah, and and not to mention they don't have kids, they don't have wives. It's literally just these guys. Well, like, I mean, you know, we do take Tay with us sometimes. Oh, uh, of course. Now he's now he's got a beard, so you know, I even Taylor's place. gonna fit in with all of us really well next go around. Yeah, so, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get like a fake, like a big fake beard. I think that would be great. Actually, guys. we should we should get everybody wearing fake beards. Me and Rex can put fake beards over. Just have a fake beard over your regular beard. It'd be awesome. Oh, I would. I would totally be into that. I think but everybody see, at Disneyland would love that. Oh well, yeah, obviously. I mean, the the people that take pictures would love you for sure. But you know that. I mean, that's the thing. Is it's it's that's kind of the the thing is um, you know. Rex and he, like Rex especially does that wherever he is. You know, he's he's always out there. He's got a big smile on his face. He's always like, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, he's that's that's like just what he does. Yeah. Um, there, I would say that it's less. I don't want to say weird, but like, you know, when you're there, you're experiencing like everybody's kind of in that that mentality where it's like oh yeah everybody's in a good mood and everybody's like you know unless they have like you know four screaming kids yeah. holding but you know it's like and 
I think that even, even now it really does. It brings out the best in people. Some like sometimes, I mean, there's, yeah. there's, it brings out some really bad things in some people too, but overall, I think it really, there's, there's a sense of, of kind of fun and whimsy there that, that makes people happy. And so I think that with Rex, you know, that, that normal thing that he just does, it gets returned a lot more readily. And, you know, for someone like you, who's, you know, is a really nice guy, but you're usually like more stoic, let's say. Um, stoic. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, you're, you're nice, but you know, if, if it's you and Rex walking down the street, he's the one that's like, you know, uh, and he's like running down the street waving everybody. And you're the one that's like, being a normal human behind him it's like you're you're willing to give anybody the shirt off your back but at the same time you know you're not being goofy and that's well and that's the difference yeah um and to go back to the thing you said before because I, I i do want to play this out something i've wanted to say for a while actually um rex is that thing that he says um where it's, it's not my idea it's your right it's our idea i i love that and I think you kind of touched on it there. It's like, it's, it's almost, I think, too simple to really understand for a lot of people. Um, it's, it's so, it's so ingrained in who we are and what we are. The, the, the idea is not that, you know, karma itself, the physical business is something that, that, anybody could have come up with it, but it's really more of just inherent. It's like the concept of karma, what karma is at its heart, which is, you know, going back to what we're talking about, what karma is and what it exists to do is to help people. It's not more complicated than that. And the idea of helping people is inherent in just about everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's the thing that I, I think a lot of people miss is it's not about you know, family food gifts or, or, you know, stickers, or it's, it's the, the concept of helping people that heart. And that's the same thing that, that I think feels you go to a stickering event and it does, it feels like, you know, we, people who don't know each other jump in and they start talking and they start helping mm -hmm. and they're all working towards the same cause. And it's all about, you know, listening to other people and relating to other people. And I feel like those, those two feelings really, they're yeah. very, again, similar, you know, it's the same idea. Mm. Well, and it, um, it, Rex says normal human. Yeah. Yeah. Cause everybody knows normal. Yeah. Normal is like a relative in our group. Right? I stand like, by it, Rex. But, uh, <laughs> um, geez. Now I'm thinking about who's actually normal and who's not. And that's just, it's, that you know what? I, I, he knows what I mean. Uh, um, uh, ah, geez. What was I, I, dang it. I just, I just lost it. Um, it's okay. We'll make fun of Rex not being a normal human again. Well, you said that I was the normal human. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I mean. Said. That's he's There's not normal. Come on. I think you know, and obviously, normal is very relative, and it's a little bit mm -hmm. ironic coming from me to say that. But you know, it's just it's funny because, like, you know, and and you see this a lot in in the shirts is like, especially the later ones is like Rex is always a little bit more cartoony than everyone else. Um, if you really yeah. if you really stop and look at him, like he's usually a little bit more exaggerated. And a little bit more of a caricature than everyone else is because well these like the the pirate ones you can't see it as well because it's it's done in a very specific style but like if you look at last year's for example mm -hmm. um the one with everybody is the different lands uh -huh. um he's always got like this kind of this button looking nose and this kind of this bushy little mustache which does not look like his real mustache at all by mm -hmm. the way and if you look at like, you know, you, even as a skeleton, like you, you've got this, the, you know, that the curls in the beard there and the mustache and, you know, but him, he's always a little bit less 
realistic and that's part of it is because you know he's uh to borrow a phrase he's highly animated he, he is highly animated so I, I usually just call him a ham that's all well i mean uh, you know <laughs> potato potato yeah yeah um you know it, it's it's funny because we we've actually talked about that a few times just like over the years with all the different shirts and i still hold that i think one of the one of the ones that makes me laugh and i'm gonna have to ask you this too but like the the drawing that most makes me laugh about myself oh, is on, the very first halloween one when you drew me as frankenstein oh oh i thought you were gonna bring up that bike one. Oh, which God. one the bike no no that's rex you yeah drew, i that's know rex in I... that picture i can't say that's me that's rex and the bike picture is epic. Like everything about that bike picture is fantastic. By it's the way. very done badly, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have to ensure the picture done. of the bike image, like right here. We'll put a bike picture. Oh, but uh, um, no, like that. Th every time I look at that picture of me as Frankenstein, I just it makes me laugh because it, for some reason, it just it it seems so good. Um, but like yeah that would always just kind of got me because like you said it's a little bit there, there's a good contrast in there so you know i i gotta say like i'd give it to you actually the original one but it's it's literally like this big right it's like i i did the first years i was at work um at this phone center and i literally that was literally where that came from i think um my i think my sister and i were counting down days before we were going on our next Disney trip and uh, funny Rex and uh, we were doing this thing because we were both working at the same place and we were doing this thing where every day I would draw her like a Disney sketch and then on my lunch break I would take it down to her cubicle and she would just like put them all up mm -hmm. uh, to count down the days and one day I'm doing that and I, I think I drew, God, I want to, it was either, it was either you or him as one of the hitchhiking ghosts first. I think mm. it was him with the top hat. And so I, I drew that out and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I like that. And like, then I just start sketching out this other one. I'm like, oh, what could I do for the other one? And I did just these little tiny drawings. That's why they, they look so like blurry on there but mm. yeah it was um that those ones were very interesting like i think everybody's came out pretty good except mine i think mine is a little bit hard to tell what it is but um yours was really good like there was a, a just a lot of light and shadow yeah um the expression i think i nailed pretty well i think you did too like i said every time i look at that one i've got that poster you know over my couch and it does i look at that and it's just like jesus christ <laughs> so just get some bolts for your neck and you'll be all set i know it'd be like it fit I'm telling you it's there so but no what so here's a question for you what what would you think is your favorite semblance that you've drawn into your artwork so far of ours my favorite what like if you had to pick your favorite picture that you've drawn with you in it oh um, what, what would it be um i mean to be perfectly honest i think the i think the pirates one is the best is the most mm -hmm. like actually artistic thing i ever i have done and i hesitate to take like credit for it because i i bought a a lot of um mark davis's books mm -hmm. like right before i did it and so, you know, I, I, all, I feel like I traced it. I didn't like I, I li didn't trace Whoa. it, but I feel like I was I was looking at so much of his work that I feel like I feel like a lot of it just kind of got yeah. carried Whoa. over, like that... rather than being rather than being inspired by it. I feel like it's more or less a one to one. Well, I would say that it's much more inspired because when you look at the when you look at the characters and and the detail that went into it it really feels more like your style and you know it's funny that you mentioned that one because that was the shirt or i shouldn't say that one. we're wearing this yeah, shirt. this one this one the one right that's on here. screen right now yes this guy i i remember when we were down at disney 
wearing these shirts. And I was walking around in the art shop. I, I can't remember the name of the art shop, but you know the one, the, the one right there. The, the one on Main Street? Art. Yeah, yeah. The Disney Gallery. Yeah. yeah, the Disney Gallery. I was in there and they have the they have the people and they're drawing at the easel and they're you know doing all the different Disney characters and stuff like that. And the girl that was drawing, her and I started talking about it and I showed her this shirt and she literally made the comment of, I could never do that. And the reason that she said it was because she spends all day drawing how Disney trains them to draw. And what you did is you took the artwork that somebody else did and you you did that that great like iconic move of emulating it but making it your own. Because the characters really do have a very, you know, you've got a very anime style that floats into everything that you draw from a lot of your, you know, I mean, I, hey, you and you're, if it wasn't for you, I never would have taken Japanese class, you know? So oh, yeah. there's another part that bleeds into all this. But when you look at the characters, there's that definite anime touch to them all. That's just the Aome style. And that's, that's the only way that I can put it. So as original oh, yeah. as it gets, you know, but you can definitely see the inspiration in the artwork. And to me, that ability to to make to incorporate somebody else's style into your own and make something more out of it is is even even more of a talent yeah. because that that's that's true art you know i pre i mean i appreciate it. like i said i i definitely like the way that they came out um <clears throat> like i i don't yeah mark davis was always one of my favorite artists and um so i mean it's, it's very nice of you to say those things um but yeah, I mean, it was in, in a technical term. I I would say that was definitely the my favorite one. But uh, I think you know, and obviously they they all they're all a little bit different. I I try and do them a little bit different every year. Um, I could easily tell you which one is my least favorite, but I don't know. I think if we're talking about most favorite, and it's not on strictly a technical level, mm -hmm. I I really liked. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to say because i you know um i really liked last year's mm -hmm. 2000 yeah, with all, the, with all the disney lands and stuff like the doing them like the characters this is all the different lands and having them in that in the yeah. positions and um if you look at it like the the costumes are all inspired obviously you know like the indiana jones is, is easy yeah. and um you know uh the star wars one is is very straightforward but like Colby's in particular, like Colby's costume is based on something that they used to wear in Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. And um, Taze is, is King Arthur from uh, Sword in the Stone. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like that one a lot. That one came out pretty good. Yeah. But I think as much as I like, like the stretching portrait and the Evil Dead mm -hmm. shirt, I think my favorite one will always be the very first one like the very first Disneyland one because it's yeah. it's so it's so straightforward and so yeah. stylized and it's really easy to tell what it is from a distance and mm -hmm. um it just it works really well you know a lot of the other ones get very complicated and, oh yeah you know, but that yeah. one from it you can see it from a distance and it makes sense right away and you know mm -hmm. just from an art from an art standpoint it, it succeeds the best I think yeah well, and it was like you said, it was a, a flash of inspiration when you were at a call center job. Yeah. You know, which is oddly, oddly enough, when some of the biggest ideas hit. But um, oh, no, yeah, it, totally. It's, it's always worse great. when you're sitting there and tr like when you're sitting there staring at a paper and trying to come up with something mm. rather than when you're sitting there doing something else and you're like, you know, barely paying attention and you start doing something else it's always always works out better that way i think yeah so it's funny because rex talks about loving the stretch paintings and the the hitchcock pictures because those are you know and that's the that's the fun part is all the universal stuff is is awesome too you know the fact that well, we, that was yeah the evil dead one i like i said mm -hmm. i that's one of my favorite ones just because like the that's composition is really good but mm -hmm. um I also like on that one how like usually Rex is like the focus of all of them. 
mm-hmm. that was one where where Rex wasn't the focus, and right. that going back to the fact that he's you know kind of a that he's often represented in those as kind of more cartoony, mm-hmm. um, where it's like this idea of Jake playing Ash, and then you've got the puppet version of Ash, which is literally from the show, but it's mm-hmm. Rex. And it's just like I so I like that one a lot. Yeah. Um and yeah, Ghostbusters was okay. Rex is saying the Hitchcock one and Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Um Ghostbusters was okay. It's it was it's it's all right. Oh, it um, was more than all right. It was awesome. I you know the the thing about the Ghostbusters one is it just never really like it never gelled with me. Like there's a couple of them in particular that like the Hitchcock one I really do like because it uh it's it's more than just a very basic like the ghostbusters one is really simple like it's it's you would expect to see that in a ghostbusters shirt you know so or in a ghostbusters piece of artwork so it's not is there's nothing about it that's unexpected or Mm. unique it's just okay well this is pretty straightforward except for the universal arch, which was a mistake or um, sort of a, a hat, like a, you know, that was, that, that was, that was the printers being dinks. That's all. Well, that. no, I mean, you know, it's copyright law and copyright law is bullshit, but yeah, um, at least in its current form, but yeah. you know, it, it was okay. The, but the Hitchcock one on the other hand is dude, it's massive. pulling in from all these different things. And it's like, I didn't really nail it, which is why it's not my favorite one, but it's pulling in from a lot of different sources and it all works pretty well together. I think I would like to do, uh, I think I would like to do like, try and redo that one at some point and try and really do what I wanted to do with it when I'm not under a deadline, but we'll, you know, we'll see. You know, it's that, that Hitchcock one is, it's, it's actually one of the most unique things that I think I've ever I've ever seen brought around. And you know, Rex kind of has a good point that we really should just like make these posters available for people to have because mm-hmm. they're just they're just cool pieces of artwork. Because like that that Hitchcock poster or, or shirt picture, whatever uh, piece. Yeah, what's so cool about it is it's such a unique like montage style shirt because like you said it does it it grabs so many different um works of his and brings it all into one big summation even though there's not actually alfred hitchcock anywhere we've got rexy hitchcock and you know um jake the peeping tom with his glasses and and taylor the vertigo man and you know no no tay tay was uh uh uh, Norman Bates. Oh, that's right. Taylor Jeremy Bates. was Jeremy, uh, was, Jeremy Vertigo. was Vertigo. Um, but but like like you said, it's such a unique grouping of all of his works put into one picture, and I, and I've never seen anything like that for him. You know, most everything is his unique pieces. There, you'll see the picture for the birds or the picture for you know uh, Psycho, or you don't really see that montage style, which you know, it's it's a work of art. It really is. Yeah, and like I said, I I do like that one a lot. I um, there there like I said, there are some things about it that I would change if I ever go back and and redo it. But uh, yeah, the tallest one has vertigo. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he never hears that. Um, but that's kind of the difference between like that one and the Ghostbusters one. And I and I don't. This probably sounds really pretentious, but like that's the kind of thing that I wish I could have been able to do with the Ghostbusters one, but the Ghostbusters one looks like the cover of a video game. I mean, literally, like if you look at the Ghostbusters video game, like that's very, it's to go very that, similar. I'm gonna have to go pull that game out now and look at it just because you said it, so. Well, here, I'll let me go grab it, I got it. Okay, okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, hey, nobody needs to see that I'm not wearing pants, right? Oh, hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll make sure to let everyone know ahead of time that there we we took the liberty of blurring the parts up for ourselves, you know. 
It's okay. like when you when you get the one up on the old Dude. censorship people and bleep your own swear words, you know. It's really wedged in there. Sorry. I was going to grab the yeah. one on 360, but it's behind a bunch of amiibos. Uh, so. And obviously, he's probably going to put this on screen, but this is like, this is the remastered version. Okay. And it's like, you know, it's it's very straightforward. You've got like, mm. the, if they're firing the guns, one of them's throwing a trap, one of them's got the PK meter, Ray's got the goggles. And you've, and got, you've got Stay Puffed. Stay Puffed in the background. Like, it's right. It's it's very obvious, and uh, that's okay, the thing I, I like about that. the Hitchcock one, and even um, let's see, um, well, even the the like the monsters one I think is really pretty, like be, like they're they're caricatures, like it's not just the the characters in full view, so it mm. works better. I don't know. Plus, it no, no, I, I get what you're saying. I I, I follow you. So, but that's, but that's, you're exactly right. It's, it's why that Hitchcock one's really unique. You know, it's, it's a really cool shirt. Same dude, the Ash versus the Evil Dead, same kind of a deal where it's, you know, it pulls all these different parts into that one really great picture. It turned out fantastic, you know, yeah. um, the, the one, so are you ready? Cause I, I know that Rex is probably going to listen and hear this and we can just kind of, is there an idea for shirts for this year? Because yes. you know, we, we should be doing a Disney trip with with things maybe turning around if those people in California with yeah. outsiders come in to visit the parks. Well, and then if and then if the people who own the parks decide that we have enough money to go visit. Yeah, the parks, that's true. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually uh, I have been thinking about it. I uh, I got a new new graphics tablet so that I can, you know, put a, put some extra time into it this year um mm. i don't have one for universal yet because i don't because okay we usually do it based on their haunted houses and obviously you know still up in the air if those will even happen yeah um i don't know like it it depends but um the the one for disney this year i think is it's tricky because i keep wanting to go back to that classic uh graveyard cartoon uh -huh. I, I can't let that go you know that but the symphony idea it, it's not bad but it's it's a really hard one so when really it hard when one. it happens it mm -hmm. will be my magnum opus i'm sure as far as karma shirts go uh -huh. but um no so the one for disneyland this year is um it's based on an attraction that is no longer in disneyland but is very near and dear to my heart. And um, it's by another attraction that I really like, but nobody else seems to. And um, let's see, what else can I say about it without saying what it is? Um, it's, there, there is a version in Disney World and it's slightly different. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll... <laughs> wreck the same captain eo <laughs> that is never gonna happen if only if you know what only. and this here's the sad thing is you know what i really wish we could do that because the mm -hmm. i have this one that's already partially done for captain eo and i would really love to use it like i don't it, it, i've lost it at this uh, at some point i have no idea where it is now but i am very happy with the way it came out and i i'm like well you know because I'm the only one who thinks in a practical terms about, you know, we probably shouldn't go out and piss off the entire no, internet. We need to do these things. It, it would be good for the world for us to do these things. Well, maybe. I, we'll see. You know, I one of these days, you know, I may run out of ideas and be like, okay, well, we'll do Captain EO this year. Okay. Just so long as we we make, uh, I, I'm getting, Taylor's going to have to be the, the little flying guy like like knocks over all these. i think colby well no Col colby i think needs to be the little the little flying guy the the real problem is who's going to be uter because I'll nobody be wants uter. nobody wants to I'll be, be uter. uter go ahead you want to be uter? no you can't sure. well go for okay it. so jeremy would be like the robot yeah that turns right? into the big like, base or he turns yeah, into like the, the drum, drum kit. kit yeah he's got like the, all the medals mm. uh let's see 
I guess that would mean, let's see. So if you're going to be Uter and Rex is, is Captain EO. He has to be Captain EO. Uh, oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, that would mean that we have Colt. No, Colby's. So that's everybody, right? Um, no, because we didn't give one to Taylor. We tr- we switched oh, yeah. out Taylor with Colby. So we got to put right. Colby or Taylor somewhere. So Taylor's, I guess Taylor gets to be the ship. I <laughs> we're, No, there was, there was one other character. I can't um, remember who it was. Um, so I, I just kind of, I unfortunately lost track of characters because I just had this really big picture of Rex doing like a wicked Michael Jackson kick and us having a laser bolt come off of his toe. Like yeah, you were, you were shirt. thinking of that, of his, of his horrifying cod piece. That's what, that's what you got. That's where the focus is yeah, at for so everybody. That, Rex nailed it. Taylor can be one of the guys getting hit oh, by the bolt and like turning into a person. I'm sure. I'm sure there was one other character in there, and somebody in the comments is going to mention it. And one of us should really look it up on our phones. But um, oh, I don't know. Ta- like Tara would be on. There. Oh, somebody just texted me with the answer. Um, but uh, and then of course I get to be the the like the alien queen. So yeah. you know I'm See? pretty. We're all covered. I, I win. So you know I I I don't have a problem with it. I, um, that's you know what would, you know what might be another good one though is uh i i keep wanting to do mr toad obviously mm-hmm. um it would be really fun to do one that was like um oh what's that other what's that other one that i uh shoot i just lost it there's not enough of us otherwise i would say you could do snow white and the seven dwarves yeah except they they'd all be rex then it would just be a whole bunch of him. No, no, you would have to. <laughs> you, you would have to put each one of us. I mean, granted, beardless dwarves are not a good thing, and they don't really fit. But yeah. you know, we could we could throw in a couple of you know, Colby. We'll, he'd love it. It might be. We'll do that. We'll do that the year that everybody wears a fake beard. The year everyone wears, yeah, the the, because then it'll make sense, you know. And here's the thing: you even draw Snow White with a beard. That, oh, that's the trick. You, Everyone's you gotta. gotta have a beard. Um, no, but there. Oh, honey, I shrunk the kids. That was what I was thinking. Oh, about. okay, okay. Like, you know, one another another rather unsung attraction. That was I. I actually really liked Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Obviously, like when I was really little i liked captain eo and then when they changed it to honey i shrunk the kids i thought that was better mm. because you know i didn't really like michael jackson i i kind of <laughs> it's kind of a phase for me and then i kind of like grew out of it for a while i mean as much as you can grow out of michael jackson's amazing music but uh, um and uh and by the way we're just strictly talking about music but you know <laughs> i think you're all I'm, right i'm just saying it because it's like you know it's like this is going to be on the internet it's going to be there forever i just need to cover my own bases like michael jackson was an incredible musician he's a weirdo but you know, you know all that other stuff here, but anyway you know, that was our literally we grew yeah. up with that stuff that stuff shaped our childhood so you, yeah you got you got to really recognize it but it is. you yeah. know yeah and that's the thing is that's why i clarify because it's like you know incredible musician very influential to music but you know i acknowledge that he was a, a weirdo um yeah. but no my, my point is just like so they had after that they did honey i shrunk the kids which i thought was amazing because you know it to me it really made a lot better use out of the 4d space right um i mean it did all the exact same stuff as a matter of fact i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even reprogram the show it's just like okay, well, the chairs spray you at this point. So well, what can we do that's going to make that occur? Um, but, you know, Rick Moranis was in it. I right. adore Rick Moranis. I think um, the, I can't remember her name, the actress who played his orig- his wife in the, in the first one, I believe was in it as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, it got back the two principal members of the cast. I mm-hmm. think it might've even got as both of the original child uh kid actors back yeah it was just it was it was a neat concept and it was one of those things that i think is really underappreciated because it was you know they they bring it out and it's like you know you're in the audience of their demonstrating the laser 
yeah but the way that they do like the way that it it played out was just really funny and fun i don't know Mm -hmm. but well and they called it honey i shrunk the audience right yeah yeah Yeah, i i remember see i never i i never wrote went through that thing myself i just remember seeing the signs for it and it being like a really big attraction for a long time yeah um because you know rex and i because that was a disney world attraction if i'm not mistaken right? no it was just it was a disneyland was it a disneyland yeah they they took captain eo out and replaced it with uh honey okay I that audience. Yeah. that happened in that gap like when we didn't do disney like i said from like the time we were about 13 14 or something like that until we went with you we hadn't done disneyland for a long time and i yeah. remember seeing the signs but i yeah, i never did that one but the captain eo show was just come on now that was yeah. just awesome I still don't know why they took it out. I mean, obviously, you know, they probably lost the license or something. To this day, I am going to hold that Captain EO is a part of the Star Wars universe because that was written and directed oh. by George Lucas. Captain EO is in that same. Captain EO is a bigger part of the there. Star Wars universe than a lot of the Star Wars movies. No kidding, especially especially since Disney bought it. It's it's gone just this way, but yeah, you know, hey. Uh, at least it was part of the classic star wars universe well and that's one of the things that i really even to this day love so much about the sh- like the show i mean yeah again it, it's a fantastic show it's it's uh, yeah. you know on par with i don't want to say thriller but you know it's like you look at some of his music videos like uh yeah. like beat it and uh you know the it's the bad, ones that or... yeah that really that mm-hmm. tell a, a big story like it's it's that it's it's a it's a michael jackson music video but it's star wars Dude, and it's it's easily it's good, on you know? par it's with really good it, it's really is because just the production and everything else that went into it that that definitely puts it on par with thriller because that was the, that was the big thing was the production value and i mean they didn't put thriller in 3d come on they didn't do anything like that they, they, they could have Neo in 3d they could have they like but that's the thing is you know yeah i don't even know where you can find that song like i've i have not been able to find that song uh which rex referenced in the the chat we are gonna uh we are gonna change the world Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know if it's one of his and maybe it isn't because i have not been able to find as as far as i know it was only for that thing i think it was a one-time thing well, but like you can, so you can find the song on Spotify, uh-huh. but it's not him singing it. Oh, really? Like it's, I, it's like a cover of it, I think. But <laughs> even that they did that, that that album of mm. from Michael Jackson when he died. That's supposed to be every song that he did, and it's not on that either. Well, here's an interesting thing because um, now that uh, just thinking about a couple of different things over the years, um, you remember that old '70s disco song, "Love Roller Coaster." Oh yeah, the one with with the scream in it. Yeah, yeah. So that song on, and then this is going to be a weird reference, but in in the late '90s, that Beavis and Butthead Do America movie came out. Okay. It was the full length Beavis and Butthead movie. Um, but oh, we all remember that. Well, hey, hey, yeah. I, I might just be aging myself here, but whatever. Um, no, but in in that movie soundtrack there's a there's a cover version of that song played by the red hot chili peppers and the only way you can find that cover version of that song is if you own the beavis and butthead do america soundtrack only way you can get it but, Doesn't exist but you, can else. you download that soundtrack though not that i've been able to find huh that that is weird but yeah and that's why i say there there are certain things that when they're performed by an artist like um one of the reasons why you can't find the original friend like me is because there's parts of the song that are voiced by Robin Williams and his, from my understanding, it's like his group that owns the licensing rights to it. The estate. Yeah. Yeah. And so like on Spotify, that song never comes up because you can't get a hold of it. Buy physical media kids. Exactly. Buy physical media. One of these days I'll take you on the tour. You'll see the wall of physical media in Jake's home. It's it's necessary because if you don't have it, that's you're gonna lose incredible works of art like that. Just like these shirts and those posters. And that's why I say we probably ought to consider letting people buy those. Well, you know, see. if anybody like here's the thing, realistically, the only people that have ever asked 
or you and Rex. If if anybody else wants to ask, then I will. Then I'll be like, okay, well, you know, because we've talked about it before. Mm. But I just don't think demands there. I think the only reason people want them is because you guys are like, oh, look how cool they are, and people are like, yeah, those are really cool. Can I have one? And then they walk right going, oh my god, I. I, I oh, that's not true. Everybody wants to have some of that work. I do want it like those those uh, hanging portraits, though. We're definitely putting those in your stairway because those are those. Look that great. would be awesome. We need to plan that one out and set it up. Yeah. So. Well, it's time. It is time. Well, my friend, I, I can't thank you enough, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Karmic Transmission number 25. This is the first in a couple of segments where we're going to get to know some of our hosts. Today, Ayame Nelson, one of my oldest and dearest friends, I've, I've known her for 30 plus years of my life and I really don't know what I'd do without her at this point. Hell, I don't know what it'd be like not having her around. It's yeah, scary. It would, up, that'd but, be weird. Um, I, I really, you know, I want people to understand that we're such a unique group of people trying to do something like, just like that Michael Jackson song, we're going to change the world. That's that's what we're going to do and we found a vehicle and a way of doing it and, and it's, a, it's something that we love to do together because it allows us time to to talk about shirts and Disney trips and, you know, comic books. And, and, and very, very little karma stuff. Hey, there's been a lot of karma peppered in here. It's just subtle. It's it's like salt and pepper. You just, you just dash it in there a little bit here, a little bit there. It goes a long way. Yeah, a little dash. So, little dash. but no, thank you guys for joining us. Karmic Transmission number 25. Ayame Nelson, I'm Jake Vanderlinden. Um, as always, you can find us www.karmaincarnate.com if you want to see what it is that we're trying to that we're trying to make happen and that we are making happen that's the thing is it's not a try we're doing it every month we're making this thing happen um if you want to catch us on twitter we're at the karmic feed ayame is kind enough to do a lot of our social media so you can always catch her at ayame x goddess um on facebook and youtube karma incarnate uh any one of our agents, if you're ever interested in knowing how you can buy some food or how you can see, how you can be an impactor in your community, reach out. Let us know. We're always here for you. And until next time, guys, uh, we'll, we'll use it. Karma out. Why not? Right. Karma out. Karma out. Let's do it. See you, my friend. See you later. <laughs>